Shall we ask our Heavenly Father for his guidance today? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for these opportunities we have to assemble, to come together, to share, to discuss, and to learn. Father, we need you. Forgive us, Father, of any sins. Help us, Father, so that we may become cleansed and be prepared for the work that you would have us to do. Help us now. Be with us in all things so that your will may be done so that your character may be shown, so that we may understand what it is to truly enter into the rest that you would have us partake in. For these things, Father, we thank you. For these blessings, we praise you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay. I'm going to be very direct. There's going to be several things that we're going to be sharing this morning. And as I have listened since yesterday afternoon, some of what I'm going to share is going to go somewhat in line with, with what I have been hearing. Now, the paper as prepared that we're going to go through today is presented under the premises of numbers as symbols and symbols of time. If you are not familiar with this, I suggest that you're going to need to get familiar and get familiar very quickly. Over the last many months, money and much of these premises have been set aside and quite a bit has been ignored out of hand. Too much time has been spent on bickering and minutia rather than finding points in areas of agreement. This paper is going to touch on points of history, both that God is presenting and that has needed to be uncovered, and on points of prophecy and their relevance for today. It is provided in the prayer that there will be those that may read this paper and will find within elements to bolster their faith for what is to come. Do you have any questions of what I've just said? And yes, I do expect to hear, have some feedback from people. <clears throat> it was a time of war, a time of division, a time when brother battled brother, family against family, one of the bloodiest wars in the nation's history. Isaiah ben Amos was given a vision, one with specific ramifications for both sides. It is 742 BC, and within 65 years, one combatant, Israel, the North, will be removed from the world stage. And within the 46 subsequent years to this removal, in this same epoch, Judah, the South, will no longer control its own, own destiny. 19 years after the prophecy was given, in the year 723 BC, Israel, fell to the forces of the Assyrian Empire, and 46 years later, in 677 BC, the nation of Judah became tributary to Assyria, specifically to Ershadon. The year that Judah fell can also be noted as 77 ab urbe condita, or 77 years after the founding of Rome. I found that to be a very interesting point. What happened to all of Israel, north and south, provides an example, a type of what is soon to take place in America. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, as spoke by Amos. Can we allow Isaiah to speak to us today? Please note, numerical symbols of 1946 along with the combined symbol of 65, are to be noted and examined further within this paper. Seven is an important number in the Bible. It represents completeness and is memorialized by the seventh day. 
49 is also important. From seven by seven, you have the example of the Feast of Weeks from Exodus, seven Sabbaths of weeks, if you choose Leviticus 23, 15, along with the time that has been remembered as Pentecost, for you cannot have a 50th without a 49th. Further, 46 is interesting. The human body has 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46 chromosomes. 46 is also noted to relate to the temple because when Christ stated in John 2, 19, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up, he received the following response from the Jews. Then said the Jews, 40 and six years was this temple in building and wilt thou rear it up in three days? Some of us are going to see this as review. Some of us will be a little surprised by some of the points that we're going to be making. From this, it can be shown that 46 is a number associated with a body and with a temple. As it shows in 1 Corinthians 6.19, but 1 Peter 2.5, ye also as lively stones be ye built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Are we not today to become the living stones of the temple that God is assembling? Mm -hmm. Finally, 220 is another important number. It can be shown many ways in the scripture with one of the best, coming in the book of Genesis. Speaking of Jacob, and he lodged there that same night and took of that which came to his hand a present for Esau, his brother, 200 she-goats and 20 he-goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams. From this and other examples Throughout scripture, 220 can be shown as a number of symbolizing reunion or restoration. These items will be covered in greater detail as we proceed. Now, I'm going to shift to another of the pages that I have open. Is this now open in front of you? Is a chart in front of you now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What I'd like you to see, here we have a chart dealing with these time periods, 742, 723, and 677. And we can show here the prophecy was given. We have the 19 years where Israel falls. We have the 46 years where Judah is no longer sovereign. But as we look further, where Judah is no longer sovereign in 677, we have this period of 220 years. God, at the outset of this time period, was seeking a period of restoration for his people, if his people would listen. And this is an admonition for us today. Are we willing to listen? background. We began with a study in Malachi, which led us to references in Leviticus, passages in Exodus, and a lot of things that we had to look at. Malachi is accepted as the last book written prior to the first advent of the Savior. Malachi is also a book with a very specific admonitions, especially to the priests. Since the destruction of Jerusalem Temple in A.D. 70, there has been no priesthood because there is no way to offer the sacrifice. Are we not the sacrifice of today? So this premise that is being presented herein is that Malachi is written more for our time than the time in which it is written. Is this not what Sister White has told us? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
With this in mind, a careful reading of Malachi shows that our Heavenly Father references a covenant with Levi. Malachi 2.4. An examination of Exodus 19 shows that a covenant was offered to all of the children of Israel, not just Levi alone, wherein he would make them a kingdom of priests. Exodus 19.5. Is this not the same offer that our Heavenly Father has made to the church today? That the entire church would be a kingdom of priests? Correct. Okay. Malachi 2.1. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. Does it say this suggestion? Does it say you need to think about this? No. It says this commandment is for you. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because you do not lay it to heart. Can this be any more specific for us? Consider the above most carefully. For the following is about our Heavenly Father. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Comment? Should we expect that God is not going to do exactly as he says he would? I can count on it. All right. Another point of consideration is that this chapter of Malachi provides this admonition to the priests. Judah hath done treacherously. And an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange God. This, as we have studied, is related to the acceptance of apostate Protestant doctrine. We need to be very careful. Saying the, saying the strange God would uh, be a pro Protestant, apostate Protestantism, right? Correct. Are you saying okay? We need to be very careful at what we're doing, as it says further in Malachi. Yet ye say, wherefore, because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet she is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. To me, this is giving reference to the fact that we need to be accepting and studying according to the course laid out by Father Miller. If we're going to do different, if we're going to be accepting doctrine separate from what Father Miller would have, we are in trouble. Now, in order to properly examine this passage, we should note that there are multiple symbols presented herein. Judah is a people that claim to follow God. Israel, a nation or a people whom God has blessed. 
daughter, or woman can represent a church or a method of teaching and learning. Wife of thy covenant, a method of learning provided by God. If any disagree with what I'm presenting here, feel free to speak up either now or later. In this application, it can be shown that there's a people that have heard that have given lip service and have rejected the offered covenant. <clears throat> Please consider brothers and sisters, Mrs. White has been very clear. Why has Christ not returned? He has not returned because his bride will not make herself ready. Christ's return is dependent upon his people seeking to be prepared for his return and not putting it off. That is the covenant that is being offered. Are we willing to accept that God is able to do exactly as he says he will? Now we're going to take a look at some historical points. There's a reason behind some of these numbers, and there's a reason behind the points that we're going to be addressing. The land that became the United States came onto the world stage in the 1600s as a land of opportunity and religious freedom. People came to practice their chosen beliefs openly without the fear of government interference. By the 1750s, the colonies had become a region of varying opinions and actions. As the United States were emerging from the War of Independence, events were transpiring on the world stage. On the 15th of February of 1798, French General Louis-André Berthier marched, marched on Rome at the instruction of the Directorate and proclaimed a Roman Republic. And further, he stripped Pope Pius VI of his temporal powers. 17,050 days later, brought America to October 22, 1844, the day and the date of the Great Disappointment. This was 46 years, eight months, and seven days, or 560 months and seven days after the fall of the papacy. On May 21st, 1863, the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventists were founded. 65 years, three months, and six days after February 15th, 1798, or 3,405 weeks. Now, as noted, Isaiah ben Amos predicted in 742 BC that Israel, all of Israel, would soon fall. In 723 BC, 19 years later, Northern Israel with its capital of Samaria fell to the Assyrian empire. 46 years after this, Southern Israel or Judah was no longer independent. 46 years after the Pope of Rome was taken captive, a movement suffered its great disappointment. 19 chronological years later, from those that continued to study after that day, a church was founded. This structure showing a time period following by a span, followed by a time period, sometimes in reverse order, is also called a chiastic structure and is found in many ways in Hebrew scripture. So the time periods of 1946 followed by a span of time, and then 46 and 19 have significance to us today. Do we have a problem with that? Nope. No. Nope. Nope. Okay. History points, part two. 
there are those that are listening to this presentation today that lived through the 1970s. I was one. <clears throat> the 1970s America was an interesting time to be alive, especially if you observed entertainment. 1975 to 1976 is considered the gayest year in music, television, and movies, with themes openly addressing the lifestyle on shows such as Alice, Family, and Barney Miller, with movies such as Norman, Is That You?, and the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Why is this of, of concern? Leviticus 18, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. And Leviticus 20, 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. It's clear from these passages that this is not an acceptable lifestyle as God would see it. It is directly not acceptable acceptable for any that would look to be a priest unto God. Now, the government, the American government, is invested and inserted into almost every aspect of our lives, including how we live our lives and the choices that we make. Yet, as we are seeing today, America has departed from dependence upon his word and is accepting of the word of man. Where this lifestyle was at one time against the law, it is now openly accepted and celebrated. America has come a long way in 46 years. From this, the application is being made that a temple of sorts has been raised up to glorify a lifestyle, a life decision that is not in God's order. Those that have chosen to accept this <clears throat> are the churches, the Presbyterians, the Episcopals, the Methodists, the Baptists, the Seventh-day Adventists, and the Roman Catholics. Sadly, there are now churches that celebrate this choice. Churches that choose to flaunt their choices in the face of God as if he will not choose to express his will on this matter. It is no different now than it was at the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. At that time, it was not uncommon for sexual relations to be between men. This was, for many years, known as sodomy and was punished in many parts of the world. Currently, this lifestyle is now accepted in many states, even up and into the marriage relationship, which is a covenant. In the example of Balaam, as he is riding the donkey to curse the children of Israel, Balaam comes to a point in the road where he must pass between two walls. It should be noted that Balaam is traveling with two servants, a type of threefold union with Balaam as the false prophet. Balaam sought a covenant with Balak of Moab. This covenant was not in the order of God. Three times the angel of the Lord appeared before the ass. Once the ass went into the field. The second time they follow the road between two walls of vineyards. Now is a vineyard equal to a doctrine? Balaam's foot is crushed between the donkey. Ass is Islam and a wall. Sister White identifies those walls as marriage and the Sabbath. The third time the ass fell down under Balaam and Balaam struck the ass with his staff. God's covenants are offered because he is capable of performing the covenant. The marriage covenant is provided as it is outlined in scripture. It is to be between one man and one woman. Anything else is not in his order. Now, history points, part three. Three equals 46. Any math mathematicians out there are going to argue the literal application. 
This is figurative. Yes. 1969 was a landmark year. It opened a door that many today continue to battle. In that year, a lady named Norma McCorvey was pregnant with her third child. She sought to have an abortion. However, in that year in Texas, this was illegal, except when necessary to save the mother's life. Lawyers filed a lawsuit on her behalf in U.S. federal court against her local district attorney, Henry Wade, alleging that Texas abortion laws were unconstitutional. The rest, as they say, is history. However, there is more, much more. What is not widely discussed? This case was argued before the Supreme Court December 13th, 1971, in front of seven justices rather than the more customary nine, given the retirements of John Marshall Harlan II, appointed by President Eisenhower, and Hugo Black, appointed by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It is to be noted that the biblical date of this hearing was the 24th day of the ninth month of 6016. Now, as noted on Wikipedia, after a first round of arguments, all seven justices tentatively agreed that the Texas law should be struck down, but on varying grounds. Chief Justice Warren Berger assigned the role of writing the court's opinion in Roe as Roe v. Wade, as well as a companion case known as Doe, to Harry Blackman, who began drafting a preliminary opinion that emphasized what he saw as the Texas law's vagueness. At this point, Black and Harlan had been replaced by Justices William Rehnquist and Lewis F. Powell, Jr. But the first round of arguments had already occurred before they became Supreme Court justices. But Blackman felt that his opinion did not adequately reflect his liberal colleagues' views. In May of 1972, he proposed that the case be re-argued. The case was re-argued on October 11th, 1972. Please note from this entry that William Rehnquist and Lewis Power were seated on the court and that the case was re-argued on October 11, 1972. It is also to be noted the biblical date of this hearing was the third day of the seventh month of 6017. What does that say to you, brothers and sisters? The third day of the seventh month. What would be taking place according to God's plan at that point? The third day of the seventh month would be the third day of the Feast of Trumpets where people would be getting their hearts ready because on the 10th day of the seventh month would be the day of atonement. It's interesting to me here that the initial date where this case was argued was the 24th day of the ninth month. In the last presentation, Brother Theodore was making it very clear that on the 20th day of the ninth month, as shown in the book of Ezra, Judah and Benjamin were to come before the Lord and prepare to separate themselves from their false wives, from their wives that were not in God's order. They were to give up the understanding, the Protestant understanding of doctrine and return to the wife of their youth. Here, 
this day should have been giving a warning to those within the Adventist church. As further noted on Wikipedia, on January 22nd, 1973, the Supreme Court issued a 72 decision in favor of Norma McCulvey, holding that women in the United States had a fundamental right to choose whether or not to have abortions without excessive government restriction and striking down Texas abortion law as unconstitutional. The decision was issued together with a companion case, Doe v. Bolton, and involved a similar challenge to Georgia's abortion laws. Now, please note that the dissenting justices to Roe v. Wade were Byron White, who was appointed by John Kennedy, and William Rehnquist who had recently been appointed by Richard Nixon. The biblical date for this ruling was the 16th day of the 10th month. Now, what's, at, what's of interest at this time? There are 303 days between the times of the hearings. However, there was 406 days from the initial hearing to the decision, 406. You remove the zero and you have 46, the number of the temple. Can we then apply that a temple was being erected that was not in God's order? And the body temple was being. Uh, put away. Exactly. Now. Again, I'm going to switch page. And there's a reason. Because we're going to deal with a couple of points. Now, as, as we were stating before, here we have this chart. And this chart is showing the seven times, right? Mm -hmm. So we have 723 BC taking us to 538 AD. Now, as I, as I looked at what was presented on WhatsApp, again, I thank our Heavenly Father for revealing to Brother Stephen the point that was made today, showing that the 777 extended from 457 BC to 321 AD. Here we have this, the, the 2520 something that is largely set aside within the Adventist church. Now, as we're going through this, we have many time periods. In 677, we have this 220-year period, which always fascinated me. As I would come to understand, look to understand the 2300 days, I kept asking the question, why? Is this 220-day period here? Why are we not approaching this in a different way? Here we also have the 490 years that takes us to 34 AD. When we come to 538, we have the 1260 years beginning, which raises up the abomination which maketh desolate. Many would say that from 723 to 538 AD, we have the years of pagan domination. And that from 538 to 1798, we have the years of papal domination. Right? Yep. Now, any questions at this point? Not for me. Okay, 
as our Heavenly Father has shown me, as we have been preparing this, as we have been discussing these things, all of this time since July 18th, we've seen multiple reasons why July 18th was valid. We're going to address something on these lines that helps us to see the validity of July 18th. As we go down through here, we have this time period. We have the 1260 years from 723 BC to 538. Now we go from 538 to the 15th day of the second month of 1798 as would be counted in the Gregorian calendar and the papacy falls. Now we're going to come down here and we're going to look at something further. We come here 46 years after the fall of the papacy. We show the 10th day of the seventh month. Christ enters the most holy place. But we, we've never looked at before. We have the 10th day of the seventh month taking us to the second day of the second month in 5908. From the time of the great disappointment to the founding of the Seventh day Adventist Church, there passed a period of 18 years and seven months. One, eight, seven. What does that say to you today? Once to July 18th, for one. Well, have we ever addressed this before? Have we ever seen this before? I've seen it. I've okay. Seen it, but not, not too often. I look at this and I see a warning flag. Here's 18 years, seven months. When this church is founded, when this church chooses to set aside the wife of its youth. Now we're going to go back. We have a quick numerical recap. 2019 marked the 46th anniversary of the Roe v. Wade decision. That was in 1973. The year of Roe v. Wade will be celebrated as 49th anniversary as of January 22nd, 2022. Two, 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 two. The 1975 to 1976 entertainment season was 46 years ago. A lot of 46s, so many temples, altars to worship man and his decisions. So many ways in which God is being mocked. Dwight. Yes. Uh, 22 and 22 and 20, uh, 64, so sort of verse of 46. Exactly. Nicely done. Now, continuing, using the latest available data, there have been 62,502,904 babies aborted since Roe became law. Consider that. To get to another take on the enormity of this loss, a nation with a population of 62.5 million would rank 23rd on the list of the world's most populous countries. 
23 is half of 46. Considering this, in the terms of population, a nation of that size would rank ahead of countries as Italy, Spain, Kenya, South Africa, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Argentina, Colombia, Venezuela, Hong Kong, Cambodia, South Korea, and Canada. That is the effect of this decision. Consider this. How much does our Heavenly Father value life? All life. Now we are coming on to a 49. From 1973 to 2022 is 49 years. Will this be a jubilee, a symbol of the beginning of the freedom from sin, rather than a celebration of sin? Now we're going to get into this. We're going to get into this very deeply. A symbol of rebellion and its implication for this time. Prophecy is the foundation of our understanding of the Holy Scriptures. William Millard's method of study has been the baseline on which much light has been accepted. Do you have a problem with that? No problem. Father Miller noted that a day could represent a day is one year, a revolution of the earth in its orbit. Now, there are verses that are used to support this understanding, and they are noted as follows. Numbers 1434, after the number of days in which he searched the land, even 40 days, each day for a year. Shall ye bear your iniquities even forty years, and ye shall know my breach a promise. Ezekiel four verses five and six. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of the days, three hundred and ninety days. So thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side. And thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Now we come to Daniel 9.24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and the prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Have we not addressed these 70 weeks in these charts? Is this not the 490 years that were accounted unto Daniel's people? From the first two passages, the concept of a day for a year has been widely presented, yet if we properly adhere to the rule of first mention, then these should have been seen as later examples and other verses should have been used to establish the premise. Have you ever considered that? Let's look at one of them. Genesis 29:25. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what is this thou hast done unto me? Did I not serve thee for Raquel? Wherefore hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee also for the service which thou shalt serve with me seven other years. In these verses, Jacob the deceiver is deceived by one that is his family. Instead of the wife he sought, he is now married to a wife he had not sought. 
and he is told to fulfill her week, that he can have the one that he sought for another seven years of service. If we present this mathematically, then seven days equals one week. Therefore, seven days equals seven years. And this becomes one day for one year. Now we need to consider the following. Exodus 23, 10 through 12. And six years shalt thou sow thy land and shalt gather in the fruits thereof. But the seventh year thou shalt let it rest and lie still, that the poor of thy people may eat. And what they leave, the beasts of the field shall eat. And in like manner, thou shalt deal with thy vineyard and with thy olive yard. Six days shalt thou do thy work. And on the seventh day shalt thy rest, that thine ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. Here again, we have a threefold union, the field, the vineyard, and the olive yard. All are to rest in the seventh year. Exodus 23 comes much before Leviticus. But in Leviticus 25, we have speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when ye come into the land that I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years Thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. We have examples now in Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus, where we're able to determine that a day for a year has been shown in multiple forms. However, all of these forms are linked with a common theme. Laban rebelled from giving Raquel to Jacob. Exodus 23 occurs after the covenant was presented to all of the children of Israel and before Moses ascends the mount the second time. This covenant is rejected by all save the Levites, and we see that rejection with the golden calf. In Leviticus, the offer to enter into rest is presented to the people a second time. This offer is rejected by the attitude of complaining and the acceptance of the report of 10 of the 12 spies. In Ezekiel, the symbols of Ezekiel are a warning wherein all of Israel has rejected the Sabbath and were to come under the siege by the heathen nations. In Daniel, 70 weeks or 490 years until the Messiah is to come to Israel, 70 weeks to prepare that resulted in the rejection of Israel as a nation and as the people of God. I would submit to you that from these examples that a day for a year is a warning symbol. It is a warning of rebellion. It provides a warning for the people with whom God would enter into a covenant. Now, is it possible for us to tie these latter three examples with the three angels message of Revelation 18? Is it possible then for us to look that the warning given of the Sabbath of rest that was rejected, that the 2520, the seven times, if it's rejected, that we then see those that would reject the Sabbath and cannot be benefited by the warning of the mark of the beast? 
Daniel came before Christ. Daniel fell upon his face as one dead because he could not count. He, he just, he couldn't handle the concept that he was before his creator. We spoke last night in the meeting of the Mare. Very directly, the looking glass vision, I believe, is the attempt of Christ to be reunited with his people. Now we have a numerical synopsis. Genesis 5, Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 300 60 and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And Methuselah lived an hundred and eighty and seven years and begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 782 years and begat sons and daughters. And the days of Methuselah were 960 and nine years, and he died. And Lamech lived 180 and two years and begat a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. The masculine version of this name, Noah, shall comfort us. The feminine version, Noah, means wanderer. Which would you rather be? Noah to be comforted or Noah to be a wanderer? And Lamech lived after he begat Noah 590 and five years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Lamech were 770 and seven years and he died. From the initial studies that had been presented, it was determined that the 777 years of Lamech represented a period of 777 days for this modern movement. With 252 days and 525 days being presented as symbols of the seven times of Leviticus 26. And the time periods were placed as follows. And feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. November 9, 2019 to July 18th, 2020, 252 days elapsed. From July 18th, 2020 to December 25th to today, 525 days elapsed. Now it's been stated that nothing happened on July 18th, 2020. However, this comment is incorrect. The world was placed upon notice that Nashville, Tennessee would be destroyed. And it's only through the mercy of our Heavenly Father that it was not. It is to be noted that Lamech dies prior to his father, Methuselah, and that his name is accepted as when he dies, it will come. Methuselah was 187 when Lamech was born, and his death in his 969th year occurred shortly prior to the flood. We have already noted the validity of the number 65, the age of Enoch when Methuselah was born, and Enoch was 252 when Lamech was born. Now, there are other items that we should also note. <coughs> Adam dies 56 years after the birth of Lamech. Mahalil's age at Jared's birth was 65 years. Enoch's age and Methuselah's birth was also 65 years. Israel and Judah, no more after 65 years. Two patriarchs, two nations. 
Enoch's age at the birth of Lamech, 252 years. Methuselah's age at the birth of Lamech, 187 years. Seventh-day Adventist Church was founded 18 years, seven days after the 22nd of October of 1844. July 18th was Sabbath, July 18th of 2020. Lamech's age at death was 777 years. This took place five years prior to the flood. His age at his death may be a secondary symbol of warning. Methuselah's age at his death was 969 years. The Seventh-day Adventist Church was founded 969 weeks plus three days after October 22nd, 1844. So our situation with 187 and 969 give us a very interesting point of reference. Both are applied with the founding of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Again, we return. Three equals 46. We come to the verse, John 2.20. 2.20, again, being a reference to restoration. Then said the Jews, 40 and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? 46 years from 1973 to 2019, abortion is legalized, sanctified by both the church and the state. 49 years coming up in 2022, abortion is a legalized anniversary will be celebrated by many. From 1976 to 2022, the gay lifestyle will be accepted and promoted. Are abortion and gay marriage two temples that have been erected by man's wisdom in the United States? This is a question that I am asking. Is the end of the 777 days signifying that the temple is to be completed and that the lively stones, as shown in 1 Peter 2.5, have now been selected? Think about that for a moment. <clears throat> we are now coming to the day of the Lord. As Father Miller would look at this, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. It is to be noted that Adam dies at 930 years of age, 70 years short of one day with God. We have judgment day or a thousand years that is supported by 1 Thessalonians and 2 Peter. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But beloved be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. <clears throat> the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance." But the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, 
and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And the book of Revelation. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, for which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that part that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. In the days of Noah, a double curse was resting upon the earth in consequence of Adam's transgression and of the murder committed by Cain. Yet this had not greatly changed the face of nature. There were evident tokens of decay, but the earth was still rich and beautiful in the gifts of God's providence. The hills were crowned with majestic trees supporting the fruit-laden branches of the vine. The vast garden-like plains were clothed with verdure and sweet with fragrance of a thousand flowers. The fruits of the earth were in great variety and almost without limit. The trees far surpassed in size, beauty, and perfect proportion, any now to be found. Their wood was of fine grain and hard substance, closely resembling stone and hardly less enduring. Gold, silver, and precious stones existed in abundance. Is today any different? I would submit that it's not, that a double curse again rests upon the earth. One where the church has refused the covenant of rest, the seven times of Leviticus 25 and 26, and where man has allowed the legal murder of the unborn. <clears throat> Many at first appeared to receive the warning, yet they did not turn to God with true repentance. They were unwilling to renounce their sins. During the time that elapsed before the coming of the flood, their faith was tested and they failed to endure the trial. Overcome by the prevailing unbelief, they finally joined their former associates in rejecting the solemn message. Some were deeply convicted and would have heeded the words of warning, but there were so many to jest and ridicule that they took part in the same spirit, resisting the invitations of mercy and were soon among the boldest and most defiant scoffers. For none are so reckless and go to such lengths in sin as do those who have once had light and have resisted the convicting spirit of God. Brothers and sisters, is this not what we have seen occurring since 2017? <clears throat> have we not seen associates choosing to walk according to the fire of their own kindling? Have we not seen have we not seen many mocking what's been being said about July 18th? And I, I apologize. Please please make your comment. Here we are today. We need to determine who we 
have our faith in? Is our faith in our Heavenly Father or is our faith in the arm of flesh? Those that at first received the warnings turned to jesting and ridicule. They were mocking. Can a man mock God? And if so, what are the consequences? As time passed on with no apparent change in nature, Men whose hearts had at times trembled with fear began to be reassured. They reasoned, as many reason now, that nature is above the God of nature. And that her laws are so firmly established that God himself could not change them. Reasoning that if the message of Noah was correct, nature would be turned out of her course. They made that message in the minds of the world a delusion, a grand deception. They manifested their contempt for the warning of God by doing just as they had done before the warning was given. They continued their festivities and their gluttonous feasts. They ate and they drank. They planted and builded laying their plans in reference to advantages they hoped to gain in the future. And they went to greater lengths in wickedness and in defiant disregard of God's requirements to testify that they had no fear of the infinite one. They asserted that if there were any truth in what Noah had said, the men of renown, the wise, the prudent, the great men, they would understand the matter. Again, looking up to people. They yes. Like our arm. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> our Heavenly Father has laid before us enough evidence that if we're willing to search, if we're willing to consider, that he's telling us that this world is about to close. That the government of the adversary has been defeated and that what is before us <clears throat> is but a temporary issue. Yes, there will be issues. The situation that we have here, the message of Leviticus 25 and 26, my belief is that this is the offered covenant, the covenant of rest. I believe that this is and can be tied with justification. I believe the message of the 2300 days can be tied to sanctification. I believe that the message of the vision of the looking glass where we are brought before Christ is given so that we can see do we reflect his character or do we reflect our own? Of the three, it is a most fearsome vision. Be really reflecting uh, the devil's character. Agreed. We've now come through this period of this 777 days.
we have now <clears throat> reached a point. I believe that our Heavenly Father is seeing that the lively stones are ready to be assembled as his temple. For you must first have a temple before you can have those to worship in the temple. The question that we need to be asking ourselves, upon whom are we relying? Are we, as the antediluvians were saying, are we asserting that if there's any truth in the message of July 18th, that the men of renown, the wise, the prudent, the great men, the theologians of the church, that they should understand the matter? Where have they obtained their, their knowledge? Are we not to be as Christ was at 12 before the doctors of the temple? Are we not to be as Christ was when the comment was made? Whereof is his learning? What are we to do? Should we not walk as Christ did? Should we not be dependent upon our Heavenly Father for our wisdom and for our knowledge? Should we not be searching our Bibles? as did the Bereans. I had a conversation with a friend earlier in the month that told me very bluntly that many of the things that we had been studying, especially of the book of Joel, were in error. And that I should choose not to make use of an old Bible with the Apocrypha, because there's just nothing there for us. Yet Mrs. White is very direct. <clears throat> in vision in 1850, she made it very clear that the Apocrypha was a hidden book and that the wise would understand. Are we not supposed to be as wise as servants and as harmless as doves? Whose admonition do we choose? The current ongoing mocking comments have been related to the Lord showed me in 18, that the 1843 chart was directed by his hand and that no part of it should be altered that the figures were as he wanted them, that his hand was over and hid a mistake in some of the figures so that none could see it until his hand was removed. Then I saw in relation to the daily that the word sacrifice was supplied by man's wisdom and does not belong to the text and that the Lord gave the correct view of it to those who gave the judgment our cry. When union existed before 1844, nearly all were united on the correct view of the daily. But since 1844, in the confusion, other views have been embraced and darkness and confusion has followed. This was written November 1, 1850. The Lord has shown me that time has not been a test since 1844 and that time will never again be a test. Now, here are some points 
the Apocrypha is found in the 1769 Oxford Revised King James, is of no use to us today and should be ignored, is one mocking comment. Yet a reference from the Apocrypha is on the 1843 chart. The above statement is clear. The 1843 chart was directed by the hand of the Lord. Is this or should this be set aside? I would say no. Certainly not. Why not? I said certainly not. <laughs> okay. The Lord showed me that time has not been a test since 1844 and that time will never again be a test. Does this state that time will never again be a symbol as we see in John 2.20? On these two questions, I would, res I would respond with a loud no. This is presented for your consideration. And now to complete, Joshua 24, 14 and 15. <clears throat> now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The time for the bickering, backbiting, finger-pointing is over. The question we have now, are we willing to work together to be assembled as the lively stones, or do we wish to be set aside? Consider that as we go forward today. Or as we've been talking about party spirit, I think we've been talking about that for a while. That too. Okay, shall we close this session? Yep. Heavenly Father, we need your guidance. Father, we have sinned. We have not trusted you as we should. We have not held on to your arm as we should. We have relied too much on mankind, on the creation, rather than relying upon the creator. Forgive us, Father. Direct us so that that which is done from this day forward, will bring your character to the front so that we may properly show your character to all with whom we come in contact. Help us, Father, that we may hold on to the covenant that you have offered. Not the covenant of death, but the covenant of life. Direct us in this path, guide us, for we need you. We need your wisdom and we need your strength. For this, Father, we ask, we thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat>